All right, I am here with my guy, Steve Kidd. Thank you, Steve, for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Greg. I really appreciate it. All right. Well, we were just talking about this uh, before we hit the record button, and you've been doing what you do for, you know, 30 plus years, which I, I think says a lot of things. Uh, one, it says that you are pretty good at what you do. Otherwise, there's no way you would have lasted 30 years in doing this. Uh, secondly, it, it also shows that you've probably seen just about everything there is to see. So I, I think you're going to be a book of knowledge here. I'm, I'm really excited to, to dive into, um, really kind of, you know, a lot of your background in marketing, but, you know, specifically, uh, a lot of the work you do with, with authors and, and helping them get published and, and helping them promote their books. It's, it's something that I've always had in the back of my own mind. Uh, and I'm really interested in just, just learning. And I think, I think people out there feel the same way. Perfect. Yeah. Let's jump into it. Cool. So well, look, how did you get started in this? Like where, where, where do you get started in, okay, I'm going to help people publish books. So um, going way back in time in the mid eighties, um, I was actually the lead singer in a Christian rock band. Um, I've written a whole bunch of songs um, and I've written books throughout the course of my life. Um, in 2007, my second youngest daughter and my then wife um, were huge Twilight fans. If you remember the movie Twilight oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and we lived at the time near Portland, Oregon, which is where the first movie was filmed. Um, and they went on this journey for my daughter's 18th birthday, going to all of the filming locations and, and blogging about it. And I helped them turn that blog into a book, helped them publish that. Um, and uh, it exploded. It was at one point, the number one best-selling movie-related travel guide on Amazon. Um, and, uh, you know, we still make a little bit of money, you know, $10, $15 a month off of that crazy book. You know, that was 2007. So, um, but what we really discovered was the power of the word bestseller. Um, it is literally statistics show that it's the number one influencer credential you can get bar none. My doctors that I work with would be the first ones to tell you they get more out of saying they're a best-selling author than they do out of saying they've been a doctor in their field for 20 years. Um, and so immediately after that book became popular in the marketing company that, uh, you know, I've ran forever, um, we began adding that in and, you know, literally our high-end clients would come to their website and it would say they were a best-selling author and they'd be like, you know, when did I write a book, let alone make it a bestseller. Um, and that system grew out of there. And then, you know, we were encouraged by a coach to make it a program for everybody. Um, and so we did. And, and now I have a program that, you know, literally at whatever level a person's at, we can, you know, come alongside of them and help them learn how to do it or do it with them or do it for them, just depending on, you know, where they are. What, what designates a bestseller? So for you, you know, a lot of people out there write books for you to write books and then be able to actually call yourself a bestseller. What, what does that exactly mean? I do absolutely um, rely only on Amazon. As far as I'm as far as I know, Amazon's the only statistically driven bestseller list. Um, when you start looking at like New York Times and Wall Street Journal and those, those are editorialized lists based off of wholesale purchases by retailers. Um, doesn't necessarily mean any end users got the book. Amazon's is totally based off of, you know, if your book's at number two and another book's at number three, the book at number two sold more copies of the book during that time frame. Now, the downside to that is Amazon's uh, bestseller list is much more volatile. It updates every hour versus once or twice a year. Um, so, you know, it does have the potential of changing quite frequently, mm -hmm. um, but it is the very up-to-date. This is when you look at it, you're looking at a reflection of what book actually was selling the best about eight to 12 hours ago in the mm -hmm. U.S. And then if you're talking international, uh, you know, about 24 to 36 hours behind. So that is totally what I'm talking about. And then I am talking about, you know, in the specific category being sure. on their top 100 list in that category. Sure. So if, if you write a book for a particular category, you know, self-help, business, marketing, whatever it might be, and you're able to get into a, uh, a bestseller list, you know, um, I guess top 100 would be bestsellers. Uh, then yes. at, at that point, you, would, you could designate yourself technically a bestseller. 
Yes. And all of the programs that I do, you know, we literally take screenshots of Amazon, including the timestamp. You know, obviously it's going to be the timestamp in the area, you know, in the time zone I'm in. But, um, you know, so that if somebody ever asked, you could be like, yeah, at, uh, you know, 1234 p.m. Central Time on 2-10-2023, you know, there's me as on the bestseller list, you know, there's Amazon.com, all of it. So, yeah. um, you know, we give them the legitimate proof of what that is. Very interesting. Very interesting. So do you, uh, as a marketing firm, and, and, and that part makes sense, uh, the help of the promotion of the book, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of, of work within the, the Amazon algorithms and, and getting your book placed and, and selling books and pushing books that help you drive you up in the rankings. Do you also provide support uh, in the actual like formulation, right? If somebody comes to you and they're just like, hey, Steve, listen, I I'm a, you know, an expert in this area, or I believe I'm an expert in this area, or I think there's a need in this topic. I really would like to get a book out there. Can you help me? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've worked with people all the way from, I know I want to write a book, but I don't have a clue what I'm doing all the way through, you know, any place that they're at, they've got doodles down, they have done a keynote speech, which is a great way to have be the basis of your book, um, or anything along lines all the way up to, you know, I think it's about 18 or 20 years old that a book's been out and never made the bestseller list that we have a program for, you know, anywhere from the beginning of that all the way to the end and then beyond what happens after bestseller. So you can, you work with uh, authors who have already published, but for whatever reason, haven't been able to promote their book. You can help them promote their book and, and, and kind of get that yeah. book back up in circulation. Yeah. Wherever you're on, on your journey um, from, I don't have a clue to it's been out forever. I, I've got a program to help you. Nice. So where, where does an author start? You know, I mean, I, obviously there's some people who, who just write and love to write and, you know, they're very comfortable with that. Um, but then there's, you know, a lot of people who, who don't, you know, they don't feel comfortable. I mean, you know, the thought of sitting down and writing 300 pages in a way that is somewhat interesting or coherent or, or, or tells a story, I think can be daunting to a lot of people, um, you know, for, for people out there who are, are thinking about this, uh, including myself, like where, where is a good starting point? So there are two fundamental things in there to really understand, you know, where people are today versus where they were in the mid 1800s um, so that you're doing what's good for the person who's going to read your book. Um, I'll give you a statistic because we all like to know, well, what did you base that on? Um, Amazon has found that if your book is 100 print pages or less, more than 60% of the people that get the book will read it and finish it. Um, if your book is 101 to 200 pages, that drops to around 20%. And if the book is over 300 pages, it's less than 3% of the people that ever finish the book. Wow. Um, now, when you're talking about from a marketing standpoint, because keep in mind, I'm a marketing company, um, you know, the end of the book is where we're going to lead them to the next steps with us. If they never get to the end of the book, they never do that. Now, when you bring in on top of that statistic, human nature, we learn things one at a time. We take one step after the other. Um, and so really what you need to do with your book is take a point, make it really clear and give them a clear action on that point. And keep in mind that we live in a Twitter world. You know, people have whole mm -hmm. conversations, 140 characters at a time. Um, you know, we just don't live in a world where people really have the time to listen to or read a 350 page book. What they need is help for that. Last piece of that, and I know I'm going on a little bit longer than typically, but I want to make sure you really get this. And that's the power of the search engine. We all go to Google to look up things. You know, I mean, nobody goes to the yellow pages anymore. When we have a question, we go to Google and we look it up. Um, Google does not have the capability to say contained on page 200 of this book is the exact answer to your question. Mm -hmm. However, if you write a book that answers a specific question that people are asking, Amazon spends billions of dollars marketing with Google and Google absolutely will bring up, here's a book. It's a bestseller. It's got all of the third-party credentialing that Google loves for search engine optimization. This is the answer to your question. Interesting. So when you're, when, you know, it sounds like what you're suggesting or, or what you've seen from experience is the, the, the books that are going to do the best, or at least in the context of, listen, I, I'm not, you know, trying to be, you know, maybe like a, 
an airport novel that's going to sell, you know, 10 million books, but I'm, but I'm a, an expert in the field. I'm a coach. I'm a, you know, whoever it is, I do speaking. I want to create a sort of an extra level of validation of, of my background. I have something that I want to tell the world. I feel like I have a, a point of view instead of being a generalist type of book and take on something that's, that's so broad that, you know, you kind of get lost in the shuffle. It's like, figure out a specific problem or, or, or a question that people have and then answer it in, in 100 pages or less. And, and you can become a best-selling author on that particular topic. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, I mean, think about it like building a strong foundation for a house mm -hmm. or if you will, graduating from medical school. When you graduate from medical school, you have proven that you are an expert in anatomy and physiology. That's really what that test is. And you walk across the stage and you're now Dr. Greg for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. That's yours, no matter whether you practice medicine or not. Now, the thing about it is, is when you walk off the other side of that stage, nobody's going to hand you a scalpel and tell you to go do surgery. Okay. Right. There are lots and lots of years between that point and when you're actually really, truly a doctor. Um, the same thing's really actually true with our book. In fact, my latest book is called Bestseller is Only the Beginning. And I go into detail of explaining. It's like, this is where we start. In modern books, your book should be a bestseller day one. And then you build whatever else you're doing on it. Speaking, your podcast, a course, just the general credentialing for yourself. It's all based off of that starting point of you're a bestseller. Yeah, interesting. So what are... You know, when, when, if somebody comes to you and, and let's just say they're, they're in marketing or, you know, you're, you know, industry similar to yourself. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've published a, a number of books on your own. What are, what are some of like the topics that you've seen the most success with, you know, with, with your clients and your customers who have, who've come to you with like, Hey, listen, I, I would like to do this. I don't even know where to start. Here are areas that I have a lot of interest in. Help me out, Steve. Sure. And actually, the cool part about it is, is that most of us totally discount the thing that especially our first book should be about because it's so easy for us. We do it with such grace and ease that it would be the last thing we'd think of as being what we're really, truly talented at. And yeah. so um, that's the first conversation is, you know, what's that thing that you talk about so much that it's great if you have teens because, you know, your teenagers will totally tell you because every time you say it, they're going to roll their eyes because there you go talking about that again. <laughs> um, and not necessarily that that specifically is the topic, but there's a reason behind that. You know, use the concept of being a parent that tells their children constantly, clean your room, clean your room, clean your room. There is a reason for you as a parent why you want that child to clean their room. Some parents don't. Some parents could care less if their child's room is clean, you know, but it could be the you want to teach them a skill. It could be that, you know, it's important to you. You just don't feel good in your own house if their room isn't clean, whatever that might be. That begins to then become the clues that help us really find out what is that number one top passion that really defines who you are, that if you only had five minutes to ever speak again, you got to make sure you share that with the world. Interesting, huh? I, it's making me think of myself, what would be my passion if I had five minutes left to speak about? Um, yeah, I'll have, to, <laughs> I'll have to put some thought to that. My mind's going to like all these crazy areas. So, uh, you know, even in a situation of like, let's, let's, let's write a, a, a shorter hundred page book. That, that's still daunting to a lot of people, right? I mean, I'm sure most people haven't written something, you know, half that long since, you know, college, uh, if even then, where, where, where do you get started? Like, do you, do you work with ghostwriters or do you recommend that your, uh, your clients work with ghostwriters or do you, you know, have them just kind of put together like really rough manuscripts and then it sends to an editor who cleans it up? Um, what, what's that process usually look like? Absolutely. Two great pieces of news. Number one is we're talking about hundred print pages. So each eight and a half by 11 single spaced type pages is, is going to be five to eight pages. So, oh. you know, you're talking a lot less content than hundred pages makes you feel. So that's, that's good to start with, but yeah. yes. Um, almost nobody, I know some really amazing writers, but almost nobody is a writer, but everybody needs to be an author. Yeah. And the real secret behind it is I've met very few people who can't talk. 
they can't, especially a thing they're passionate about. You know, I've met some people who, you know, let's face it, they're not the greatest communicators, but if you get them on the topic and it doesn't matter whether, you know, Super Bowl is coming up, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's the Super Bowl or it's, you know, how to do dishes, you know, I mean, or anything in between, when you get them on that passionate thing, they just really can go and talk. Mm -hmm. And so I absolutely recommend do your book writing via interview. Um, have, you know, the best of course would be to have somebody like myself that really knows where the end point is to talk you through it. But even if you're just doing it yourself, turn on Zoom by yourself. This is how I've written most of my books. Um, turn on Zoom by yourself and just start spewing out that thing that you're just so passionate about. Um, and then take and send that to somebody that's a, a talented story developer that can go through and say, you know, you were doing a really great job, but then you were telling us this great story about Aunt Jan and you never finished. And now we're dying to know what happened to Aunt Jan. And they can come in and tell you, these are the places that don't make sense. I need to more know more about that and, and get the content out. And then, you know, grammar editors and all those kind of things beyond that. You know, I, I interviewed a uh, really interesting entrepreneur one time and he uh, is crushing it in business, but he has his own podcast and his podcast is just him. He it's 20 to 25 minute episodes. He'll pick a particular topic, does a lot of work in like the self help. He's kind of got like that David Goggins, like no BS, like I'm going to like give it to you straight. Like you're going to hear some tough love, but, and, and they're great. He's really good at it. And I was talking to him about it because obviously we, you know, I do a podcast and I, I find it easy and natural to have conversations like I am with you in which there's a back and forth. But I, I couldn't imagine just like turning on the Zoom camera and talking into a microphone for, for you know, 20 to 30 minutes and make something coherent and interesting. I, I can see how in a book format, you know, you, it's, a, it's a great way to get your ideas out. And then you have that like extra level of editing that occurs on top of it where someone can kind of distill through all your, 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 your thoughts and then be able to put it in a more of a coherent um, format. But uh, no, I, 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 more than anything, I just have a lot of respect for those people that can just turn on a mic and talk and, mm. and people want to listen. Well, and that's where the interview really comes in powerfully. I mean, even if it's just your best friend, say, hey, Greg, you know, we were talking the other day about this. Go into more detail. Tell me that. Explain it to me. Really teach me how to do this thing. Um, you know, the, the interview is absolutely more powerful because then you can talk to a person and you can talk very specifically and answer very specific questions. And, and, and you do get better content, uh, you know, especially if you're not well practiced at essentially interviewing yourself and in your mind, asking yourself the same questions that you would have somebody else ask you or somebody else would ask you. I don't know if you're keeping up on any of the new AI tools that have, have been released. Are you familiar with like chat GPT and, and some of those? Uh, yeah, things? I've tried to keep up on them as best as I can. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I've, uh, we've been using it a lot in our own business and, um, I, you know, one of my, my companies is a, uh, di digital innovation lab. So we, we develop products and, you know, we do a lot of work with blockchain and, and we've started to do, do some work in the AI space. So we're starting to build on the APIs that, that powers chat GPT. And for anybody that doesn't know, it's, a technically a natural language processing engine, but what it, what it, what it sort of allows you to do is interact in like plain English. Like you, you like write it a message. Like I would ask you a question or an employee a question, and it can give you these like unbelievably detailed responses but it's really good at editing and it's really good at helping you expand on a topic. You know, if, if, if something like, you know, I want to write a blog post on, you know, our conversation, I can essentially give it, you know, an outline of bullet points and it'll, it'll actually fill in all the, the, the gaps and you go in there and you change a few things and you can go back and have it edited and it'll spit this thing out in, in a particular voice. Um, I believe it's going to, really change the authoring process potentially, because I, I think it, it's a tool set that's going to give people who maybe have been intimidated with writing, um, you know, an avenue to be able to create content more freely and more easily. Um, I, I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Um, <clears throat> it most definitely is a wonderful tool to help people. Uh, the 
only downside I'll say to it, you know, and I've been in tech space forever. So Mm -hmm. um, is programming of any sort is Mm -hmm. only as good as the programmer. And all of us that have ever written any code will tell you there is our, there's us in the code, you know, how we Mm -hmm. think, how we evaluate things. Um, And so uh, very, very helpful um, to be able to get you down the road part of the way so that you can then get to the place where you can just comfortably have a conversation with Greg or, you know, anybody and just be able to talk about the thing. Um, and, And ultimately the best books, I mean, I'm sure you've read lots of them too. The best books are the mm-hmm. ones where you feel like this person was writing this just for me. They're talking right directly to me, right. you know? And so I think the chat GBT will really help some people be able to, uh, you know, collect their thoughts and understand what they're going to think. I don't know that it's ever going to get to the point where it'll get rid of human communication, kind of sort of like back in the early days of the internet, they were like, we're going to get rid of all news and there will never be any news programs, but the internet. And, you know, I mean, let's face it, all the big newspapers still exist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I don't think it's going to re- replace humans. I think, I think it's a tool um, similar yeah. to the internet. I, I think it's something that people will use to help them do things that were more difficult to do in the past. Now, what, what that's going to do is it could potentially displace or it could replace roles that are currently held by humans because, you know, similar to the, the old, you know, the, the, the travel agent adage, right? The, the internet kind of killed a lot of the travel agency in the industry. You just didn't need those travel agents anymore, right? It doesn't mean that it, you know, humans were gone and there was no need to have, you know, humans in that, in that place anymore. It just, you now had this technology that it was able to do a particular thing more efficiently and kind of made everybody's lives more easier. I, and I think that's where a lot of this AI is going to go. I, I, I think there's certain jobs that are being done by people that you may not need as many people to do them because of AI, but they're 100% there to assist us, not to replace us. Yeah, that makes total sense. I, I agree with that completely. Yeah. So uh, let's, uh, let, let's talk a little bit more about some, uh, some success stories. I'd, I'd love to hear, you know, some of the, some of the case studies, you know, so to speak of people that you've worked with, um, you know, professionals, maybe entrepreneurs, people who, you know, have a voice that want to do more coaching or, you know, want to become speakers or be thought about as, you know, industry leaders, right? And come to you and they go, hey, Steve, listen, I, I love what you've done. I've seen what you've done for yourself. You know, how, how, how do we do this? You know, and then you've taken them down this path. I'd love to hear a little bit about that story and, and, and sort of the, the outcomes of it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I mean, keeping in mind that I've worked with literally thousands of people, I have 100% success rate making them best selling authors at whatever level they're at. Um, you know, it starts from the beginning. Uh, my friend Cheryl, when I was helping her with her book, I, I love the quote that she gave me that, you know, she gave me as a testimonial. She said, you know, people have been telling me to write for years. And now for the first time, I have the opportunity to actually see and hear my voice on paper, something that I've struggled with and never been able to do. And now I get it. And that was just from, you know, an interview that we did. Um, You know, I have uh, Carl Michelle. Carl's such an amazing guy. Um, Mm -hmm. His book came out January 1st of uh, 2016. You know, so it's been around for a few years. Um, I haven't looked at it in the last couple of weeks, but last time I looked, it was still in the top 10. Mm. Um, The book is called 365 Hip Hop. And, um, you know, Carl went from a person who was offering to do speaking, um, his particular niche is is high schools, motivational speaking at Mm -hmm. high schools, offering to do speaking for free, couldn't get people to return his calls. After he identified and let people know, I'm not Carl Michelle. I'm international best-selling author Carl Michelle. Right. Um, I saw him, you know, four or five months later. He was booked out six months in advance at two thousand dollars per speaking gig. Yeah. Um, and uh, and it just had huge success. You know, we did a campaign intentionally with a doctor um, who was doing a program specifically intended to help doctors turn their practice into an actual business because, you know, in medical school, they don't really teach you how to be business people as well. Mm -hmm. And that's what his course was going to be. We wrote the book as the foundation for that. 
Um, and keep in mind, we're talking about selling to doctors, so it's a little higher end course than you know, perhaps somebody has done with their first course typically. But he sold um, $160,000 worth of courses in the first 60 days after his book came out, you know, because the course was ready to go and, and that was the whole intention behind it. Um, I've had other authors who, you know, one lady was a C-suite employee um, and she really wanted to go out on her own and we helped her start off day one you know, basically pretty much day one, the day she was out starting her business is when her book came out, mm -hmm. she made a hundred thousand dollars her first year in business and, and has said in, in many public places that it was totally based on, uh, you know, the start that that created for her. Um, you know, I mean, obviously if you don't do anything with it, it's, you know, it's just paper, yeah. <laughs> you know, you've got to use it and have a plan and do those kind of things, you know, it's a, it's a tool. It's yeah. a tool. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's, and, and I've seen it used before it, it, it is valuable. There's, there's something about the way we all work where if somebody is introduced to you as a author of, of a book, I think you're automatically like, Oh, impressive because just the simple fact of it, you know, it, it's, it's almost similar to like why you get a college degree, right? Like it's like, okay, you got to, a great degree in public administration is that going to help you do something in my company maybe not but like immediately it at least sets the tone of like this is a person that could like go to class go to school like went through you know four or five years whatever it is graduated okay now i at least feel confident that they're going to show up at my company and be able to do some things where just the simple fact that somebody's an author first of all like i, I think it just demonstrates a a certain level of like proficiency in in, in life right i mean because you know, I, I know, I know we're talking about how to do it. I think you can break down the process of writing a book in, in fairly simple steps and, and something like speaking into a, a, a Zoom meeting and be able to, you know, kind of get your thoughts and then work with somebody who can take that and turn it into a story. Like it, it becomes very accessible, which I, which I like about what you're doing, but there's still a lot involved. And I think it tells others a lot about you as a person that you were willing to do that and then you know once you kind of be able to kind of put the best seller label on it i think it just adds a a next year level of okay he didn't just write a book actually people bought this book and read it and and those things absolutely yeah so all right i'm sure that the process of writing and publishing a book has had a 180 transformation in the last 30 years or 20 years or even i guess less than that when you started to do this maybe 15 years uh amazon's probably changed the game significantly from what it what it once was talk to me about self-publishing what does what this process actually look like my assumption is you're not buying you know a thousand books and having them sit in a warehouse is there a way where it's kind of almost like like on demand type of stuff or, or how does the process work Absolutely. Um, you know, I mean, if you were talking 20 years ago, pretty much the only way you could go was traditional publishing. Mm -hmm. um, and there was more openness to, uh, on the behalf of traditional publishers, to bring in some people. Doesn't mean you were going to get great big checks like they show in the movies, but, you know, to work with authors. These days, honestly, if you don't have a social media following where you can do a random post on some random Tuesday and get 3,000 people to, you know, like and comment on that post, they're probably not going to look at you. They want people that already have the following because that company wants to make the money. That's where Amazon self-publishing comes in. In addition to that, Amazon's selling in the high 90s percentile of all books that are sold. So really, when it comes to selling books, you just want to be Amazon's BFF, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, um, the print on demand service is, is very easy. You know, you create an account, which means, by the way, rather than traditional publishing, you own your book because mm -hmm. it's your email address that has the contractual relationship with Amazon. Um, and so if it's not your email address that's logging into Amazon, somebody else actually owns your book. I have to have that conversation with people every day. And that's kind of rough to let them know. It's like, I know you think you owned your book, but you really didn't because yeah. somebody else, you know, um, but you log in with yours and um, you, you set it all up and it's totally print on demand. That means that when somebody comes to Amazon, the uh, Amazon prints it, ships it, and you get your cut. Um, if you want to, for example, go to an event and you want to have 20 copies with you or, you know, you could buy a thousand copies at one time if you wanted to, 
you can buy them at wholesale directly from Amazon and they will ship them to you or wherever you want them shipped. But, you know, it's a very easy process because you don't really need to have the stock of inventory at all ever. Yeah, no, it's, that's amazing. And, I, and I'm assuming your services are, are full service, right? So if I write a manuscript, um, you know, you get all like the cool little intros and outros and all the art and all the different things that might go along with the book. Uh, do you, do you help with that? Or is that, is that in a service that, you know, you would need to do with someone else? I mean, I mean, no, we have, we have all of it. We can do, you know, all the filigree at the beginning of the pages and, and the graphics for the cover and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm also, again, because I'm a marketing company, I'm going to have a pretty real conversation with you about, you know, how much of this is serving the reader versus serving your ego? Because a lot of times we get stuck in, oh, but that looked really cool. Um, and there's some things that you just have to do so that it reads, you know, you don't want to just be a jumble of words on a page. But, you know, there's also a lot of things that we as authors do because it makes us feel good about ourselves. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying we can't do that or you shouldn't do that. But at the end of the day, if a reader is waiting for you to get the right little swishy up at the top of each chapter, <laughs> um, you know, they're going to make a bad, bad decision because they don't have the information because you're trying to placate your ego. Sorry if that was too harsh. I didn't mean it to be quite that harsh, but no, no, I, I get it. It makes perfect sense. I, I, because, you know, just, I'm thinking about myself. If, if, you know, I went down this path, I would want something that looked like a book, right? Like you, you know, you, you, you we all have books. I have bookshelves of them around me right now. If I open them up, there's these little flourishes and designs and things that I don't know what they mean you know, or, or I don't know if they really matter, but all books seem to have them. So you would naturally be like, well, my book should have that too. And, and I think your point is, hey, let, let, let's focus on the goal here and, and what you're actually trying to accomplish and, and, and what the end reader really actually cares about. Um, yes, you can spend a lot of time and money and energy, you know, making it look like a, like a, you know, a whatever, a, a book that you're familiar with, but we can also just get the content out there and, 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 and do what we need to get done. That's the other nice part about self-publishing is, is, you know, you could get the content out there relatively quickly, actually. Um, and then you could spend even say the whole next year just adding embellishments for whatever reason, and you can just update the file. And then the next people that get it are getting the fancier and fancier version of it. Um, and then that way you can kind of meet both sides of that fence at the same time. Yeah. Fantastic. So what is uh the timing typically, if someone comes to you uh, with an idea, um, they want to do what you described. Uh, how long usually start to finish to get to get your book actually uh, listed and, and become a bestseller? It's actually a thirty to ninety day process. In fact, I'll tell you, Greg, that if your book takes you longer than ninety days to do. Um, not in a judgmental way because we all have stuff happening and it could be good things. You know, you could fall in love and get married or whatever, you know, but if it takes you longer than 90 days, there are things happening in your own personal life or your business that are um, delaying that time frame. But the actual mm -hmm. process of it, um, especially when you're working with a company like ours, you know, 90 days is really the max outside of, you know, those things that we need to work around to help you with your schedule. Yeah. And you guys, you know, if you're working with an author out there, or someone's listening, that's, you know, hey, I, I, I don't want to write, but I can sit and talk and, and tell my story. And I have a story I want to tell. You can take that and then you can do the 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 editing and the transcribing and, and, and kind of turn the story out of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I did two sessions with a lady that is one of the highest end financial planners for doctors. We did two sessions this week and, you know, we've got probably 70 to 80 percent of our content. And now you know, the story development editor will go through and help us understand, okay, here's where you're missing. This is what we need. Do you guys also, or have you done any like autobiographical, uh, autobiography type of stuff? Oh yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, one of the coolest ones that I was able to work with before he passed away, a gentleman whose name is Errol Abramson, who's a multi-billionaire, mm -hmm. um, had 47 companies that he created, started and sold all of them profitably only person I know of as an entrepreneur that doesn't have any losses on his record. Right. Um, and his whole autobiography, it was called You Can Too. Um, and it was all about, you know, hey, I was a street kid literally eating out of dumpsters, 
And now I'm a multi-billionaire. Here's everything I did and you can do it too. It was just amazing book to be part of. Yeah, no, that's fascinating. So what, what is, and I, you know, I know it varies, but like what somebody comes to you and, and, and they're interested, like what kind of budget is necessary to, to go through this process? And, and I'm sure there's like the small, medium, large, or, or sort of like the, the, the average, you know, the, the, the silver platinum, you know, diamond sure. versions of this, but like what, what, what should somebody expect? Well, really, I mean, you just write me a check for a million dollars and we just take That's care it. of you for the rest of your life, right? Perfect. No, yeah. um, you know, usually you're looking in the ten to $15,000 range. There's mm-hmm. below that and there's above that. Um, like you said, but that that's a good way to be thinking about it. Um, not that there aren't payment arrangements that can be done and things like that, but um, you know, that's when we're talking about everything for us, that's about where we're going to start. Uh, most other places that you go to that are going to have a full service program, you're probably looking closer to the 25 to $40,000 range minimum. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, you start to think about the, the, the cost benefit analysis on something like this. Um, you know, if, if I think included in a bigger picture strategy, and I think that's what you were trying to get at earlier is, is, you know, just having, it's not going to do anything on its own, but if you're able to use it to leverage uh, other things that you want to do and, and use it as a way to, to kind of, you know, create a credential and, um, you know, put you at a higher level in your particular field, it's, that's a relatively modest investment in, you know, the big picture for an entrepreneur, right? Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Awesome, man. Um, what, what didn't I ask? What are, what, what are, what are some of the, I mean, I know you, you got a really interesting background and, and I'd love to maybe on another episode, dive into your background as a, as a third generation minister and some of the, the things that you do outside of your marketing company. But I think this was a really really good focused conversation specifically on becoming an author and how that can be beneficial to you know entrepreneurs or budding entrepreneurs and it can become a leverage point that they can use to help springboard them into their careers so i, I don't necessarily want to veer too off, too far off into to different subjects but anything that we missed in, in in regards to you know the the services you provide and the benefits that they um can provide to people out there that that may be interested in going down this route well let me um let me give you a couple of things. Number one, and most importantly, is somebody's waiting on you. There is somebody who's making a wrong decision because you haven't shared it in the way that you would that would meet meet their needs. You know, I mean, sometimes we hear the same thing 20 times and then somebody says it just in the specific way that clicks with us. There's somebody that that is who you will be to them. Um, so that's number one is somebody is waiting on you. Um, everybody needs to be an author. In fact, I'll go even further with it. You will never maximize the marketing potential of anything you do if bestseller, bestselling author isn't part of it. You know, I know that from all the years of marketing experience, without that, the marketing program is just not going to work effectively. Whether you're talking about a enter your email address and I'll give you my free five points or, you know, a multi-million dollar program, it needs that in order to to be, uh, you know, to be the credentials you want. Um, Seth Godin even said, I love this quote. He said, if you're writing your book to make money, then don't. But if you want to make money, you absolutely have to have a book. Um, And so that would be my words of encouragement more than anything is um, everybody needs to have the book. They need to have a program so that they can do those kind of things and really meet the needs of the people that are looking for it, but also be the maximum version of who they're meant to be in this world. Yeah, that, that's a great quote. Um, everybody I've ever talked to who is authored a book minus, you know, a very small group of people who have, who have, you know, kind of transcended and blown up and, and are those household names say you don't make money necessarily writing the book, but, but it, it opens up so many doors and so many opportunities for you. And I, and I think that that, that absolutely resonates with me. Uh, last question. Um, it's kind of popped in my mind as you were saying that. So you look at Amazon, you got the Kindle version, and then, you know, a lot of cases you'll have the, the audio book version of that. Is, is that all built into the, um, you know, the self-publishing capabilities? Like if you decide you want to do a, a digital version of the book, you want to do a audio version of the book, you can go ahead and do that as well. Yes, absolutely. It's all built in. Um, Typically speaking, 
people, uh, you know, we have a whole different conversation with them about the audiobook and and the purposes behind that, um, so that it's really effectively part of your marketing. But what we find is is that it's almost exactly a third, a third, a third, thirty. You know, a third of the people wanted an ebook form, a third of them wanted in some type of print form, and a third of them wanted an audio. Now, mm-hmm. the advantage that audio has is only about one in twenty books is available in audio, mm-hmm. so there's a little bit. Um, less supply for the demand that is is equal to, you know, the others. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I will read all my fiction books I buy in my Kindle. Um, and then my nonfiction, I like the physical paperback books. And, and, and maybe that's because I read my Kindle in bed before I go to bed and I can't read business books before I go to sleep. But uh, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I can see how there's, there's a spot for both. So um, where can people find you? So, um, of course, you can go to thrivingbestsellers.com. That's my main website. And we've got the, you know, small, medium, large, and all those things on there. But what I'd like to do is give your people a free gift. Yeah. Um, if they go to ongoingwealthguide.com, um, um, that's an ongoingwealthguide.com. Um, it's just a little five-step program that's going to help you. It does include having your book. And I do even have the link in there for my patented uh write your bestseller in one hour workshop it is literally a one hour workshop that people have written hundreds of books off of so you could just do your book just from that um but we're going to talk through how to really be able to have a system that helps you be able to generate ongoing abundance in your life so not that you know all of our bank accounts waver back and forth but so that you have the ability to have the control of that destiny versus um you know being thrown by the winds of time, if you will. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, that's absolutely free to, to all the listeners, ongoingwealthguide.com. In fact, I've even tagged it at the end of it. The thank you page has a link. You can schedule a free 15 minute conversation with me to talk about your book or your marketing or anything I could do to help you out. I'd be glad to. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And I uh, will make sure that I have all that in the show notes. So anybody listening can just, uh, click on that and uh, claim the free gift. I, I will myself. Um, I'm very interested in this topic and, and learning more. So uh, Steve, I appreciate it, man. This this was really uh, enlightening to me, for me, and, and very interesting. It's just someone who's, you know, probably since forever have, have has considered this, probably been a little bit intimidated by the process. You, you've, you've made it extremely um, approachable and, you know, I think you clearly laid out the process and the benefits and, and how working with somebody like you can can really make anybody, as you said, you know, a successful, best-selling author. Well, Greg, thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it.